remember about uh, not last year, but you know, in 03, play, that, that, just that whole day and that whole experience? Um, I remember that year as our team was really just trying to figure out our identity at that point. Um, we had had ups and downs, and we were just trying to put it all together. And I look back at that day as that was a day we put everything together and sort of that aha moment, like we can do this. Like we know who we are. We know we can be explosive. And we just sort of took off at that point. It's been a, a while, obviously, since you started a game at the link. So what does it mean to you to you know, walk on the field as a starter on Monday night? Just the fact that it's Monday night football and, it, and it's Christmas Day, it's a lot, lot going on. I mean, anytime you wear an Eagles uniform, it's a special moment. So um, every time I put it on, it's really special. But to you know, step back out there um, on, at the link, um, I'm really excited for that opportunity. I'm sure you've heard the term, if this quarterback can just cut down on the interception or the, mm -hmm. or the turnovers. How hard is that to actually do, though, to not turn the ball over? Um, I mean, it's one of those things where you just have to really I mean, it depends on like what offense, what you, how you prepare, how you're, everything. There's so many aspects that go into, it, and obviously decision making in the moment uh, when things go bad, not putting, you know, pressing. Um, it's one of the, when you're in the rhythm, it's easier to do. But it's when you're pressing, you're trying to make things happen. You tend to force things. So, and that's speaking from my experience. But um, if you prepare well and you play smart, there's times where you'll dirt the ball, throw it away if you feel it's not there. But there's other times where you have to be aggressive and let your guys make plays. So um, you can't really worry about. The, you never worry about that when you play the game. You go out there and you just you sling it and you know you trust your guys to make plays. As you look back on the way you played Sunday, is the lack of interceptions does that jump out to you more than the four touchdowns? Like, are you more proud? Of the zero interceptions and the four I'm really just proud that we won that game. Um, anytime a quarterback can pr protect the ball and not throw interceptions, that's huge. So um, I know every quarterback wants to be aggressive, but you know you take pride in playing good football and not shifting the momentum to the other team because that's what interceptions are. They shift the momentum. And a lot of times they end up with good field position and the game changes. But I definitely look at that as you know, good decision making, going through my reads, my progress progressions, making, um, you know, if it's not there, being smart. Because that's the toughest thing is when you're dropping back and everything's going on, um, part of you wants to force it, but you have to sort of make the right decision at times and not force a ball and, you know, sometimes throw it away. Frank compared your mentality to a, a point guard in basketball. Mm -hmm. you, you want to spread the football around. You were able to do that against the Giants. Do you go into a game thinking you want to get everybody involved? <sighs> you don't really go into a game thinking that. You go into a game like understanding your offense, understanding the opposing defense and where you want to attack them. And it just so happens through the course of the game, based on progressions, different coverages, different blitzes, that different guys get balls. Um, I don't go into a game saying I want everyone to catch a ball. I go into a game knowing that every single receiver or tight end on my team is going to win their matchup and that they're going to be available. And it's my job to, based on what the defense is doing, to find the guy that's open. Um, or for them, you know, on one-on-one -on -one matchup to make a play. So that's sort of how it comes to be. Um, I don't really go into it thinking that way. Frank Frank said he was most impressed with your poise and your playmaking um, against the Giants. Where do you feel like you still want to grow, though? Just continue to get into a rhythm. Um, you want to excel every day. Uh, so just that was my first opportunity to step on the field in a starting spot, playing a full game with that group of guys. There were guys in that huddle that I played a lot of football with, and there was guys that was my first time to play a full game with. So throughout the course of this practice week, just continuing to focus on the fine details, uh, continue to stay, to stay uh, staying in the moment, preparing like that, and uh, just becoming more comfortable. The more you do something, you just become more comfortable. Obviously, that's my first time to start a game since last season. So uh, there, you just have to continue to get more comfortable, and then you can play at a higher speed. What ways has uh, Carson made his presence felt to you and, and helped to, you know, since the injury? Yeah, I mean, he's coming in here, um, seeing the trainers, uh, coming with us in the QB room. He's very much still you know, involved. He loves football. He loves his team. He's a leader of this team. He's a quarterback of this franchise. Um, and he's he's going to be around. He's a huge presence, and I mean he's a huge reason why we're in this position. So, Nick, the success that you've had as a team in the red zone 
first, the amount of priority that you think a red zone success has in winning a game, and then why do you think this offense has been so good in the red zone? Um, red zone's huge. Obviously, when you get in the red zone, you want a touchdown. Um, it's hard to win games, especially on the road, but any time when you get in the red zone, get that close, and uh, you just come away with three. Uh, but I think just with this team, it goes back to preparation, fine-tuning the details, and guys just putting a little bit extra time, whether it's running a route, studying film, or just understanding that specific concept. And based on the coverage, we're seeing like what we want. And when it comes to game time, you can make plays. Uh, an example would be like Alshon Jeffrey, you know, being able to see a guy overplaying a route and snap back, or Zach Ertz crossing face, or you know Nelson. You know, running with the guy, knowing he has man coverage, running with speed to get the guy to turn his hips and come out and know that he can't get his eyes back. Those things guys focus on and work on, and those fine details um, in the red zone are the difference between a touchdown or an incompletion and then kicking a field goal. Do you feel like your your comfort level is is going to? I mean, is there a lot of room to, like you said, you hadn't played much football until Sunday to kind of keep growing um, <clears throat> up through the postseason? And how much room is there for that? Uh, there's a, there's a lot of room. Um, there's a lot of room. Uh, I'm sure even you ask a guy like Tom Brady, is there room to continue to improve? And he's working his butt off every single day, and he's one of the greatest ever to play the game. So yeah, there's a ton of room to improve. There's a ton of room to get more comfortable, and it's the way you do that is you live in the moment. You work as hard as you can. You work smart, and you seek wisdom. There's a lot of smart coaches in this building. There's a lot of smart players. So uh, just asking questions and and learning. Le I try to learn something new every day. And that helps with my comfort level. If you guys do, I mean, there's a chance you guys could have the number one seed locked up before you even play. Um, would you like to play, move, you know, these last two games if they don't mean anything as far as the standings? Uh, I mean, do you feel like you need the work? You know, that's up to the coach's decision. I'm not even going to step in that role. I mean, as a player, you always want to play. Um, but it goes back to, as a player, I'm not thinking more than this moment right now, talking to y'all, and right after this. You know, back to the film and working because we have the Oakland Raiders and um, they're a good team, and I gotta give them all my attention and respect because this this game can humble you very fast. So, to answer your question, it's not my decision. I'm gonna do my job, help this team win, help lead them, help work hard every day to get these guys, get us all on the same page to when we go compete. You know, Christmas night to go out there and play fast and have fun. It's kind of odd for, for those who saw you playing 13 and 14 not to see you in the shotgun every snap. Is that an adjustment for you going under center? And Frank said yesterday it's something you really had to work on. What's that been like? You know, it hasn't been bad. I mean, my rookie year, I was here with Andy Reid, um, you know, under center a lot. Uh, last year, I was with Andy Reid, under center a lot. Um, also shotgun, I know his offense is adapted. Here we do a lot of shotgun. I've always enjoyed under center. You go back to high school tape, I'm under center a lot. College, I was gun with some under center. Chip did some under center, but it was gun. I mean, the game's gun now. I mean, there's some under center, but a lot, everyone's gun. So it's sort of funny that we talk about that. But I feel comfortable with it. I think you have to have both. You have to have packages of both, and they both serve their purpose. So um, I feel comfortable. But I think to answer his question, and I do agree with him, uh, the drill work we do from under center, um, flip puts us through a lot of work with um, our drop backs and all that. That's helped tremendously, and that allows us to be more comfortable. So that's where, you know, where Frank's saying, absolutely, um, the drill work and fill in the pocket and everything, work on that. How do you go from feel, a position uh, where, you know, you have to defer uh, to one where, to a position of leadership? You know, what's that uh, transition been like in, uh, you know, uh, in a very quick amount, amount of time? When you're in a position like I am, where you know all of a sudden you're you're backup quarterback and you're out on the field and you're leading the guys, uh, you you just I'm myself. I'm, I'm not changing. You just become more vocal and you have more responsibility, um, and people look to you more because you're the one that's throwing the football. So I'm myself. I'm just in a different role. So I, you know Carson is still a leader. He's still here, but he's right now he's in a different role and he does that role amazing and. Uh, we're, we're all doing this together. That's what's great about the QB room, too. Nate, Nate's doing an awesome job um, preparing, being ready. And then, you know, it's just the role you're in in this sport. It's, it's, a, cr it's a crazy sport, and um, 
things happen fast. Say two more. Yeah. How do you feel physically coming out of the increased workload first week of yeah. the game, the elbow tendonitis? How do you feel physically? Uh, elbow hasn't been an issue um, since training camp, so I feel great there, and then body feels great. Um, you know, I'm fortunate to you know be healthy and uh, feel this good right now. It's been so long since you guys have had a home game. Can you talk about what you expect that atmosphere to be like Monday Night Football in a situation like it is? Uh, special. Um, knowing, knowing Philadelphia, it'll be rocking, and I, I can't wait to see the fans and see the excitement and the energy in the stadium. Um, really excited for it. We'll take the last two up front. As, as a follow-up to Tim's question, uh, when Doug was asked about you today, and then the question mentioned you as a backup, he said you're the starter. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you feel that way mentally now, like this is your team, you're not, you know, you know you're the guy the same way you were back then? Yes, I mean, uh, I feel like the confidence level, absolutely. You go out there, but this is Carson's team. Now, I get like, oh, wait, like you're the guy. Like, I, that's just how I am. Like, I, I respect Carson Wentz. I love that guy. I work with him every day, and I'm going to give him his respect because he is this franchise quarterback. My job right now is the starting quarterback to lead these guys on the field, and I'm going to do that. I've been here. I've done that. Um, I know what it entails. I know the responsibility. But... This is Carson Wentz's team, and I respect him too much to make that statement. And I know I agree 100% with Coach Peterson, but from my perspective, I, I have too much respect. And uh, it doesn't change my mentality. My mentality is when I step on that field, let's roll. Um, I don't need to be named a starting quarterback. I don't, I'm going to go play, and I'm going to help my team win, and I'm going to be aggressive, and I'm going to be the player I've always been. Um, so I don't know if that makes any sense. but. How much value is there? And like you said, a lot of these guys you'd never played with, never been in the huddle with. Uh, how much value was there in guys like Alshon and Nelson, the guys you hadn't played with, um, Tori, seeing you in the huddle, seeing you making plays in a regular season game, and, and just kind of getting to know that side of you? It's big. I mean, the only way you do that is in a huddle in a game. Uh, you can go into practice, you can do practice as much as you want in the huddle. But when the lights turn on and you're on the field, um, people can change. So you're never really sure until you experience and you go through adversity on the field, you're in the huddle, you see a guy get hit, you see a guy do a, make a play, and then that, once again, that aha moment of, OK, this guy can do it. Um, and then it's just the relationship. You go through a game, you build that camaraderie, you make plays together, um, you fight together. We were down in that game and you know talking on the sidelines. Um, that, that's big. That's big to, you know, that's, that's growing opportunities. And I, Felt like we experienced a lot of different um, feelings in the last game. Thank you.